state, like uh, if you, you have eigenvalue power point, right? So you have H with some I some the thing is using mu, so you have I mu or something like that. The eigen all the eigenfunctions are you have eigenvalue lambda so mu wait and then um, so assuming you have uh, a bunch of eigenfunction phi phi sub mu and with eigenvalue corresponding eigenvalue uh -huh. lambdas lambda sub mu. And I I think this is uh for Hermitian operator H. So for H is Hermitian, then uh, all the eigenvalues are real. And then uh, if you have any arbitrary states, so let's say you use the state psi. So it's a combination of mu, some coefficient a, mu, base of mu, and then all the basis using the eigenvalue that eigenfunction as basis. Okay, so that's that's just an expansion of a arbitrary state into the eigenfunction basis. Okay, so then uh, we calculate this psi psi this expectation value of this emission operation. So that's that's basically is a scalar product. So suppose assuming you define a scalar product in this function space, and then that just plug in everything. So this into here, this into here. So you have information here. Because of, I mean, when you, when you put in into here, you actually uh, change that to the. This is a what you call the cat graph, cat function, and then a cat graph. Uh, you need to change it to the graph graph. And then when you change that, this change to complex function. Right, so that's this one. And then you have H. And operate on the same thing, but. Uh, you probably don't want to use the same mu because you already use mu, then you use this one change to like the operating symbol, like mu new. Is new. Why is it new? Okay, so far so good. And then just work out this this the uh, operation. These are just number. So becomes H operate on this one, right? H operate on this one becomes this one. So everything is the same thing. And then this operate on that. Yes. That becomes lambda new, new, new. Okay. And the next step is uh, because now this this is number, this is also number, this is eigenvalue. So this operator and that is just a scalar product between phi mu and phi mu, but uh, assuming that we normalize that. And then we already showed that uh, in, see in chapter five, or chapter five, chapter six, uh, the, the eigenfunction can be put into, uh, Can be uh, normalized and such such that they are uh, often normal. We talk about how to do that in a phase of whether whether you have to generate the state. If it is uh, not to generate, it's automatically orthogonal. If it's to generate, you need to construct it to make it orthogonal. We did that. So, but uh, assuming that you already uh, you already. Uh, do that kind of normalization, make it off normal, so that becomes a, this scalar product is, it becomes a quantical delta, becomes 
Let this operate on that. Like that because that will be more. Just a conjugate down here. Yeah. And now you can sum over one of them, say let's sum over some of the new and use the conical delta, change the new becomes mu, that becomes mu, a mu, and then this becomes a mu, is a mu complex conjugated, a mu square, and then lambda mu. All right, so that's, uh, that's the next equation, right? Are you? Are you saying this 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 participant is okay or you are so far so good? Okay, I just you said you're confused about something. I don't know which part you say you get. So this part you can get up in here. Yes. Okay. So now the assumption is that uh, this all the lambda mu because they are real this real number, say so you will have a minimum of the lambda or the lambda. See, all the lambda of mu is weighted at a certain value, say lambda zero or lambda one, or mu greater or equal to lambda. So basically, assume that whether you have the, like this, the zero one or what the first one, doesn't matter what you call it, but like you have a smallest value, eigenvalue. I mean, the other way around is also it's, it's upper value. There's no lower, lower value. It's, it's just yeah, you do it the other way around. So sometimes, I mean, it depends on how you define it. So if you call some quantity has a lower value, then the, then the, the negative of that will have, have a, uh, largest value. So, uh, but uh, just say so if, if we talk about the minimization problems. So there's a smallest value of lambda. So uh, quite obviously, this a mu absolute value square all are uh, less than one because uh, this is uh, this is assuming this is also normalized. So why why write like that? So so I. So it's equals by definition is equals to one because it's normalized. Equals to one yeah, still in one. So just going through the same thing, you see that this is just sum over mu, a mu square. You sum over all the absolute value square of the amplitude for all state and is equals to one that implied. Mu square less or equals to one for all mu. Right, it's quite obvious because all all the all are positive terms, and the sum of all of them equals to one. So obviously, they individually they must be less or equals to one. One equals to one, the other the rest will be zero. So it's quite obviously, okay. So by this, you can see that the uh, this is uh, um, see. We have we have this one way. Right? So uh, first, this is uh, much greater than. Actually, we might not need this one because we just we, we just need this one. So because all lambda are greater than lambda zero, so this is sum of mu mu square lambda zero. So this is coming from directly from this. Just assuming you have so, which means uh, you can pull out this lambda because this is constant. This is just equal. So means that if you choose an arbitrary state that is uh, built up you know, just a superposition of these eigenfunctions, you just assume something, some function of form, 
and then you put it into here, then uh, then you calculate the expectation value, then it must be uh, greater than lambda uh, lambda zero, right? So you try a you try a certain find that uh, say depends on one parameter, right? Because we are consider function, you know, a certain functional form. So F that depends on some lambda. Let me use C C that something. We didn't discuss something like that. Uh, some function that lambda. That be that uh, depends on a certain lambda. And then uh, you can calculate. Uh, because now we are talking about uh, OD, this is this is an ODE operate X is an ODE. So the all these states are just function, right? And um, then the 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 scalar part is some you know, depends on some uh, uh, integral. Okay. If you have a uh, have a you see in, in this step it's I think in the in earlier in the stern low low pairs three so you define the scalar product say scalar product is the, assuming the whether this is a the original o d is a emission then uh, the scalar product would be just the product of the the two function one with the uh, with this, with the other complex conjugate of the other ones with, with some uh, the, the, the domain of your in the, uh, the independent variable then um, so you just we if it's the all originally is uh, H is a uh, ODE that is Hermitian or self adjoint, then uh, it's just like this. Uh, see what is it depends on X if the uh, X is the independent part. Right? If it, if it is not self adjoint, you can make it self adjoint by defining, finding the weight function of the X. Right? Usually it's uh, a real function and it's, it's uh, Positive definite. So it's not uh, if it's if it's change sign, then this this would not be very, very good. So if you have a definition of your scalar product like that, then uh, then substitute the uh, f into the scalar product. So f so f well, f h f because. Of, you operate on that uh, it becomes uh, just using this definition of the a times b. I say I should say this size. So because I assume size is the state and f is the function for that uh, for that uh, for that state, and that's up to your choice for, for this function. This like depends on one parameter lambda, and then you have a H uh, operator, assuming it is a OD operator and operate on F. That's the complex one again. Yeah. F that depends on lambda. Obviously, it also depends on X because integration X, but lambda is a parameter as as it right like the F. This is function of X, and, but then the uh, it depends on the parameter lambda. Okay. So so everything is well defined. If you try an arbitrary state with certain functional form that depends on you know, some parameter. You can have more than one, but you can do it one at a time. Right. And then uh, then you put in the definition of a, of the scalar part of the expectation value. Oh, X operate on the state and then do the uh, 
scalar part. So the edge operate on that. Uh, so that also can have a W if this is edge is not self adjoint. Right. But the this this expectation value now up after the integration we only depends on lambda because you integrate x out right over the, this range. So whatever that is define what the what the value that's that's not it's been silly that so you define this so this is the expectation value E it's like that. So E becomes a function. So now you find a minim, minimum minimum value of E. Right, E, e lambda. So you find it, you find, you find the lambda. Okay. And that would be a, a function that minimizes that, uh, that's lambda. So, so F will be, uh, will give you, for this, but particular choice or functional choice will give you just a smallest expectation value. And we know that the expectation value uh, by this form will be larger than lambda zero. The smallest value will be lambda zero. If if you use exactly uh, say lambda is la this uh, function, psi is the if, if psi is just the, the lowest eigen um, the eigenfunction corresponding lowest eigenvalue, then obviously this would be exact exactly lambda zero, and you will get the then you get the the right uh, eigenvalue eigenfunction out after you you minimize that. But uh, if you don't, uh, if the choice of function is not exactly the eigenfunction, the low eigenfunction corresponding the lowest eigen well, you still get an approximate one because you are getting the the, the minimum. So to to find to get uh, the minimum, so get to get the expectation value such that get the lambda such that the expectation value is minimum, right? And so then then. F will become a approximation of the ground state of the lower the eigenfunction for the lowest eigenvalue. Okay, so and the, the question is what is F? And that is uh, basically your choice. Yeah. It's, it's arbitrary choice. Uh, say if this ODE is uh, it's difficult to solve, whatever this ODE H of H of so if the ODE is H F or H whatever that is, uh, function equals to zero. Um, if that ODE is difficult to solve, then uh, you can try the, this uh, different form of F that looks reasonable, and but this depends on some parameter, and then uh, minimize that uh, and get an item, get a functional form that corresponding to the minimum value the expectation value, and then uh, you can keep going, you can keep trying, and then uh, you see if you have uh, which expectation value that you can no longer make it smaller, then that function would be a good approximation to the, the, the eigenfunction the, with the, the lower eigenvalue, which is sometimes called the ground state. Is it? So that's the that's the procedure, uh, and I think this uh, this section just gives some examples and uh, yeah, how to choose it is uh, kind of the your guess mm -hmm. your inter iteration. It's uh, there's not a whole lot of general rules for, for that one. I mean, it, you can make it more sub, more complicated, more sophisticated. Um, maybe F using F, uh, maybe an expansion of some uh, common basis like Fourier series or 
things like that. That uh, and but then uh, if you are using a Frobenius, then there will be many parameters, right? All the free coefficient will be a parameter. And then you need to minimize the expectation value corresponding to all the free coefficients, and that would be a obviously complicated things, and you might need to do it numerically. But you can do it that way also using. So you don't solve the, you don't actually solve the eigenvalue problem, not solving the ODE problem, but just expand your, your guess of the ground state by some expanding using some basis, depends on the geometry of the problem. And then, then, then you have a bunch of unknown coefficients and then you minimize your expectation value with respect to all these unknown coefficients. And that could give you a much better guess of the ground state. With no actually solving the ODE, but because that would require lots of lots of work, lots of effort, you might as well just solve your own, solve your eigenvalue problem, your ODE by numerically, right? So, so you don't actually save a lot of things. So, so this method is mostly, I mean, at least uh, at our level, mostly just give you a simple form of the function that can approximate the ground state because you minimize that. So, so it's, is it clear? <laughs> so, can you pinpoint your, what, what is your, at what part you're more confused? Yeah. Uh -huh. They give us a sign. Yeah. They just kind of tell us what the expectation values are. Okay, that's just a direct calculation. So whatever H is, I think H uh, is given, right? Uh, which ones, uh, uh, so is, is, is H given in here? In this example, uh, right. uh, H has two parts, H is T plus V. Okay, so uh, T is It doesn't say what the form of, of, of V or V is or whatever function. Okay, so I think that the text will is just saying that skip the part that you actually calculate this one. That needs to be calculated, depends on the form. It's just giving you H is T plus V, and then uh, just already given you how H operates and the gas function would be, and then uh, just do the minute, so it's emphasizing on the minimization part. So you minimize that, uh, that will give you this. Uh, I suppose uh, H would, T would be some, something like the, 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 the kinetic energy term, which is H, H bar square, and then the D square DX. So basically, it's, it's, if, if T is kinetic energy, I don't know whether that will go into the PG. So T is, say, like T squared for T M is for a particle, and I don't know whether this is a particle, it's this thing, where that would be like H square, uh, T squared, T squared, T, there's a minus, right? 
and that uh, so but this is this is three dimensions so this is not, not just this this would be actually a gradient uh, Laplacian and then uh, we can probably take the Laplacian of a transition and but then we obviously we forget about the h bar because so h bar equals to one and Yeah, it's, it's already said to say that it is not which part you want. And say if this is a gradient, a Parsian. Then you can try, I, I don't know. Uh, so H prime 3 3 depends on all. And then it has an extra prime there. You can see. It's not like this, but zeta is beta. Right, so, so zeta is what I call lambda here. It depends on a parameter. And all is your spatial spatial coordinate. This is spherically symmetric, so um, so that becomes uh, just keeping the the radial period. So that is b squared to r squared. So you operate on that one. Take the derivative of of uh, the passing of a plus c three, and then multiply by another one. So uh, for this operator, most likely w is just one, and then uh, do the integral. I see here you can get the zeta square over here. Probably is coming from here, and v probably is using a. I think it's just describing a Coulomb potential, so so v is say whatever is z or c cube v cube square. And divided by four pi epsilon c. Oh. Also, uh, for a speaker one, so the, it just depends on the speaker coordinate. So that now v times psi and the multiplied by psi is just 8.33. It just says so square of that divided by all and then do the integration. Three dimensional integration over over the whole space, and that my you might actually get this one. And that's a negative sense. Or this, because one of them is uh, is the nucleus, which is positive, and then one is uh, the electron, which is negative. So, uh, so that may be it. So you can try try to do the integral. But that uh, one of all is one of all in multiplied by size square in a plus c and do the integration of the whole space. And probably that we can do that. So I, I, I think the confusion is that he's the textbook didn't write down the operation, right? That didn't write down actually explicitly here. Yeah. Assuming maybe assuming you know. On the mechanic, and then, uh, and then assuming you actually do that, I mean, we I don't know what whether we want want me to spend the time trying to do that, but you you can try to do it uh, and see whether that will give you the at least the form. So t expectation value of t would be would give you zeta square over two. Expectation value of v would be negative. Uh, there's a z z times um, say the, so you keep the z, but maybe setting all this to one. So ignore the q, ignore the epsilon q, all that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So I I think that the confusion is is based on that. Is you need to I mean generally you need the form of it given to you explicitly before you can actually use. Okay.